മെഷർമെൻ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെൻറ്റേഷൻ മോഡിയൽ ഫോർ ആണിത് സിലബസ് മാഗ്നറ്റിക് മെഷർമെൻറ്റ്സ് മെഷർമെൻറ്റ് ലൂമിനസ് ഇൻറ്റൻസിറ്റി ഫോട്ടോ കോൺടാക്റ്റീവ് ട്രാൻസ്ഫ്യൂസസ് ഫോട്ടോ വോൾട്ടായിക് സെൽസ് ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ സെൻസസ് എക്സെട്ര ഫസ്റ്റ് മാഗ്നറ്റിക് മെഷർമെൻറ്റ്സ് ദ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് ഓഫ് ഇലക്ട്രിക്കൽ മെഷീൻസ് അപ്പാർത്തസ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെൻറ്റ്സ് ആർ ഗ്രേറ്റ്ലി ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസ്ഡ് ബൈ ദ പ്രോപ്പർട്ടീസ് ഓഫ് ഫെയറോ മാഗ്നറ്റിക് മെറ്റീരിയൽ യൂസ്ഡ് ഫോർ ദ കൺസ്ട്രക്ഷൻ ദ ഫോർ മാഗ്നറ്റിക് മെഷർമെൻറ്റ്സ് ആർ എ തറോ നോളജ് ഓഫ് ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് ഓഫ് മാഗ്നറ്റിക് മെറ്റീരിയൽസ് ആൻഡ് ആർ ഓഫ് അട്ട്മോസ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് ഇൻ ഡിസൈനിങ് ആൻഡ് മാനുഫാക്ചറിംഗ് ഇലക്ട്രിക്കൽ എക്യൂപ്മെൻറ്റ് ദ പ്രിൻസിപ്പൽ റിക്വയർമെൻറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ദ മാഗ്നറ്റിക് മെഷർമെൻറ്റ്സ് ആർ ദ മെഷർമെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് മാഗ്നറ്റിക് ഫീൽഡ് സ്ട്രെങ്ത് എസ് ആൻഡ് മാഗ്നറ്റിക് ഫ്ലക്സ് ഡെൻസിറ്റി ബി determination of bh curve and hysteresis loop for ferromagnetic material the determination of eddy current and hysteresis loss of ferromagnetic material subjected to the alternating magnetic fields testing of permanent magnets various tests for magnetic measurements dc test ac test steady state test first dc test these are used to determine bh curve and hysteresis loop of ferromagnetic materials the direct current is used to have a variable mmf and a flux meter or ballistic galvanometer can be used to measure flux density such tests are called ballistic test ac test when a ferromagnetic material is subjected to a cycle of magnetization and demagnetization then eddy current and hysteresis loss occurs such tests are carried out at power audio power audio or radio frequencies steady state test the flux in the air gap plays an important role in the operation of various electrical equipments such a flux is measured using steady state test such test gives steady state value of the flux in the air gap of the magnetic material the inaccuracies in magnetic measurements magnetic measurements have some inherent accuracies inaccuracies due to which the measured values depart considerably from the true value the inaccuracies are due to the following reason the condition in the magnetic specimen under test are different from those assumed in the calculation the magnetic materials are not homogeneous there is no uniformity between different batches of test specimens even if such batches are of same composition flux meter the meter which is used for measuring the flux of permanent magnet such type of meter is known as flux meter the flux meter is the advanced form of ballistic galvanometer which has certain advantages like the meter has low controlling torque and heavy electromagnetic damping construction of flux meter the flux meter has a coil which is freely suspended by the help of a spring and a single silk thread the coil moves freely between the poles of permanent magnet The current enters into the coil with the help of the helices which is very thin and made from the annealed silver strips. The air friction damping of the coil is negligible. Look at the figure. We can see this spring silk thread suspension loose helices coil in the uh, coil. Operations of flux meter. The terminals of the flux meter are connected across such coil as shown in the figure below. The flux linking with the coil is varied it by either moving removing it from the magnetic field or by reversing the field of the magnet the change of the flux induces the electromotive force in the coil this emf induces the current in the search coil and send it through the flux meter because of the current the pointer of the flux meter deflects and their deflection is directly proportional to the change in the value of flux linkages this is the flux meter with the search coil as the variation of flux linkages reduces coils stop moving because of their high electromagnetic damping the high electromagnetic damping is because of the low resistance circuit between flux meter and search coil advantages of flux meter the flux meter is portable the scale of the flux meter is calibrated in weber meters the deflection of the coil is free from the time taken to the taken by the flux to change disadvantages less sensitive and less accurate accurate theory r is equal to the total resistance of such coil and meter coil l is the total inductance of such coil and meter coil n is the number of turns phi is flux linking with such coil i is instantaneous current emf induced in the such coil n d phi by dt emf induced in the flux meter due to the movement of the coil in permanent magnetic field eb is equal to k d theta by dt d theta by dt equal angular velocity of flux meter coil emf due to inductance l di by dt therefore e is equal to eb plus l di by dt n d phi by dt equal to k d theta by dt plus l di by dt
integral phi 1 to phi 2 n d phi by dt is equal to integral theta 1 to, uh, theta 2 k d, th d, k d theta by dt plus integral i1 to i2 l di by dt since i1 equal to i2 equals 0 then n phi n into phi 2 minus phi 1 equal to k into theta 2 minus theta 1 that is theta 2 minus theta 1 is equal to n into phi 2 minus phi 1 into k by k that is deflection is proportional to flux so scale is uniform then what is ballistic galvanometer the galvanometer which is used for estimating the quantity of charge flow through it is called ballistic galvanometer. It depends on the deflection of the coil which is directly proportional to the charge passing through it. The construction of ballistic galvanometer. Look at the figure. The ballistic galvanometer consists of a coil of copper wire which is wound on the non-conducting frame of the galvanometer. The phosphorus bronze suspends the coil between the north and south poles of magnet. For increasing the magnetic flux in the iron core places within the coil, the lower portion of the coil connects with the spring. This spring provides the restoring torque to the coil. When the charge passes through the galvanometer, the coil starts moving and gets an impulse. The impulse of the coil is proportional to the charge passes through it. The moving system of a ballistic galvanometer is designed to have a large moment of the inertia. This is achieved by attaching small weights to the moving system. The moment of inertia means the body opposes the angular moment. The eddy current damping provided in the ballistic galvanometer is very small. This is achieved by winding the moving coil on a non-magnetic former. If the coil has a high moment of inertia, then the oscillations are large. Thus, accurate reading is obtained. Theory of ballistic galvanometer. In a ballistic galvanometer, damping constant equal to zero. Gi equal to torque is equal to j d square theta by dt square is equal to d by dt of j d theta by dt equal to d by dt of angular momentum. Gi of t dt equal to rate of change of angular momentum into dt. G theta equal to total change of angular momentum in dt time charge flown in dt time. Assume the coil was in rest before the impulse current, initial angular momentum equal to zero, g theta equal to angular momentum after impulse current equal to j omega. Omega is equal to g, d, g theta by j. Kinetic energy immediately after the impulse current equal to half j omega square. Assume the coil can move up and up to an angle theta phi with this kinetic energy half j omega square. Find potential energy in spring, half k, k theta phi f square is equal to half j omega square equal initial kinetic energy. Half chi theta f square equal half j omega square equal to half j into g theta by j the whole square. K theta f uh, square equal to j into g theta by j the whole square. Root of k by j into theta f, uh, f is equal to g theta by j. Theta is equal to root of k by j, j by g into theta f, equal to root kj, kj by g theta f. Measurement of flux density. The measurement of flux density inside a specimen can be done by winding a search coil over the specimen. This search coil is known as B coil. This search coil is then connected to the ballistic galvanometer or to a flux meter. Let us consider that we have to measure the flux density in a ring specimen shown in the figure. The ring specimen is wound with the magnetizing winding which carries a current eye. A such coil of convenient number of turns is wound on the specimen and connected through a resistance and calibrating coil to a ballistic galvanometer. The current through the magnetizing coil is reversed and therefore the flux linkages of the search coil change inducing an EMF in it. Thus EMF sends a current through ballistic galvanometer causing it to deflect. Let phi equal flux linking the search coil. R equal to resistance of the ballistic galvanometer circuit. N equal to number of turns in the search coil. T is equal to time taken to reverse the flux. Average EMF induced in the search coil. E is equal to n d phi by dt equal to 2 n fi by t. Average current through ballistic galvanometer. I is equal to 2 into n phi by rt. Charge passing is equal to q is equal to i star t equal to 2 n phi by r. Let theta 1 be the thro um, throw of galvanometer and kq be the constant of galvanometer. Expressed in coulomb per unit deflection. Charge indicated by the ballistic galvanometer kq theta 1. 
2 n phi by r equal to k q theta 1 flux is equal to r q, q theta 1 by 2 n flux density b equal to flux by area equal to r by k q theta 1 by 2 n a s where a s is a s equal to cross sectional area of specimen the, then b s curve and hysteresis slope b s curve is generally used to, to describe the nonlinear behavior of magnetization that a ferromagnetic material obtains in response to an applied magnetic field Magnetic soft and steels are widely used as core materials in the motors, transformers and inductors. By plotting the values of flux density against field strength, we can produce a set of curve called a magnetization curve, magnetize, magnetic hysteresis curve or more commonly BH curve for each type of core material. Flux density increases in proportion to the field strength until it reaches a certain value where it cannot increase anymore becoming almost level and constant as the field strength continue to increase this is because there is a limit to the amount of flux density that can be generated by the core as all the domains in the iron are perfectly aligned any further increase will have no effect on the value of b and the point of the graph where the flux density reaches its limit is called magnetic saturation also known as saturation of the curve if now open a switch and removing the magnetizing current flowing through the coil, we would expect the magnetic field around the coil to disappear as magnetic flux reduced to zero. However, magnetic flux does not completely disappear as the electromagnetic core material still retains some of its magnetism even when current has stopped flowing in the coil. This ability of the coil to retain some of its magnetism within the core after the magnetization process has stopped is called retentivity, while the amount of flux density still remaining in the core is called a residual magnetism, BR. The reason for this is some of the tiny molecular magnets do not return to a completely random pattern and still point in the direction of the original magnetizing field giving them a sort of memory. One way to reduce the residual flux density to zero is by reversing the direction of current flowing through the coil, thereby making the value of H magnetic field strength negative. If this reverse current is increased, further the flux density will also increase in the reverse direction until the ferromagnetic core reaches saturation again but in the reverse direction from before. Reducing the magnetizing current I once again to zero will produce a similar amount of residual magnetism but in the reverse direction. Then by constantly changing the direction of magnetizing current through the coil from a positive direction to a negative direction, a magnetic hysteresis loop of ferromagnetic core has, can be produced. Determination of BH curve. There are two methods. Method of reversal uh, and step-by-step uh, -step method. Method of re reversal. A ring-shaped specimen whose dimensions are known is used for the purpose. After demagnetizing, the test is started by setting the magnetizing current to its lowest test value. With galvanometer key uh, K, K closed, the iron specimen is brought to a reproducible cyclic magnetic state by throwing the reversing switch S backward and forward about 20 times. Key K is now opened and the value of flux corresponding to this value of H is measured by noting the th uh, throw of galvanometer. The value of flux density corresponding to this H is equal to N star I by L can be calculated by dividing the flux by the area of specimen. The above procedure is repeated by for various values of H up to maximum testing point. The BH curve can may be plotted from the measured values of B corresponding to the various values of H. This is the method of reversal diagram reversing switch magnetizing winding ring specimen search coil calibrating coil then step by step method this is the figure of step by step method magnetizing winding is supplied through a potential divider having a large number of tapping the tapping are arranged so that magnetizing force h may be increased in a number of suitable steps up to the desirable maximum value the specimen before being testing is tested is demagnetized the tapping switch s is set on tapping one and switch s1 is closed the throw of the galvanometer corresponding to the increase in flux density in the specimen forms zero to some value b is observed Determination of hysteresis slope step by step method. The determination of his it is done by simply continuing the procedure for determination of BH curve. After reaching the point of maximum edge, when switch is set tapping 10, the magnetizing current is next reduced in steps to zero by moving switch 2 down 
switch two down through the tapping points 9, 8, 7, 3, 2, etc. 3, 2, 1. After reduction of magnetizing force to zero, negative values of H are obtained by reversing the supply to potential divider and then moving the switch else up again in order to 1, 2, etc. 10. Next, magnetic permeability. What is magnetic permeability? It is the property of material to allow the magnetic line of force to pass through it. That, in other words, uh, the magnetic material can support the development of magnetic field. The magnetic permeability of the material is directly proportional to the number of lines passing through it. The permeability of the air or vacuum is represented by mu0 which is equal to 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 h by m. The permeability of air or vacuum is very poor. Mu represents the mag magnetic permeability. Permeability of the material is equal to the ratio of flux density of the material to the pre in density. Mu is equal to B by H. B is the magnetic flux density and H is the magnetic field in density. Relative permeability. Relative permeability of the material is the comparison of the permeability concerning the air or vacuum. Relative, it is the ratio of permeability of any medium to the permeability of air or vacuum. Mu R is equal to mu by mu zero. Mu is equal to mu zero into mu R. Measurement of magnetic permeability. This is the diagram. The coil must have approximately one turn for every millimeter magnetic path length. The number of turns and cross sectional area AC and magnetic path length LZ must be done not. Clean the surface of core very carefully. The core halves must be clamped straight to each other with a sufficient force. The value of capacitor is not very critical but must be large enough to pass the signal without high voltage losses. The resistor must have a value that is suitable for measuring the current. Set the function generator to output a sine wave with a frequency between 100 and 1000 Hz. Adjust the output voltage to a large as possible amplitude where there is not any distortion is vis visible. Adjust the frequency so that both the voltage and current can be read with a high accuracy. The oscilloscope shows two signals, the voltage across inductor and the terminal voltage of function generator VK. To obtain the voltage across the resistor via these two signals must be subtracted by the oscilloscope and will result in a third waveform that corresponds to the voltage across resistor R. Vr of t equal to Vk of t minus Vl of t. With the effective resistance or resistor voltage, the inductor current I can be determined. I equal to Vr by R. From the absolute permeability, uh, from this the absolute permeability can be calculated by B equal mu h is equal to mu Ni by Lc. Phi by AC equal to mu Ni by LC. Phi equal to mu Ni by LC into AC. L is equal to N phi by I equal to N mu Ni by LC into I into AC. VL is equal to I into XL, I into L omega, IL into 2 pi F. Last, N square mu I into AC into 2 pi F by LC. Mu is equal to VL into LC by N square I AC into 2 pi F. Mu equal to mu 0 mu R. Mu R is equal to mu by mu 0. Next, AC test. That is done due to the uh, to ter determine the iron losses in magnetic materials at different values of flux density and frequency and to separate two components of iron losses. Eddy current losses and hysteresis losses. When magnetic material is subjected to an alternating field, loss in the power occurs due to the hysteresis and eddy currents. This loss is called the iron loss or core loss. Hysteresis loss is equal to K star B max 1.6 uh, star F star V. KH is the hysteresis coefficient. B max is the flux density. Eddy current is equal to K E star B max 2 star uh, B max square star F square star T square star V. Hysteresis loss is caused by the magnetization and demagnetization of core as the current flows forward and reverse direction. Some amount of power has to be spent for this. Eddy currents are the loop of currents induced in the core by changing the magnetic field according to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Lloyd Fisher square measurement of iron losses. This is the most common method of measuring total iron loss in a sheet material. This is also called wattmeter method of measurement of iron losses. 
The sheet material to be tested is arranged in the form of large fissure magnetic square. They are built up, on, up into four bundles and assembled to form a complete magnetic circuit with the aid of bent corner pieces and clamps. The strips used are usually 0.25 meter long and 50 to 60 mm wide. These strips are built into four stacks. Each tag is made up of two types of strips, one cut in the direction of rolling and other cut perpendicular to the direction of rolling. The stacks of strips are placed inside four similar magnetizing coils of large cross-sectional area. These four coils are connected in series to form the primary winding. Each magnetizing winding has two similar single layer coils. Underneath it is called a secondary coil. Thus in a magnetic square there are eight secondary coils. These secondary coils are connected in series in the group of four, one from each core to form two separate secondary winding. The corner joints are made by a set of standard right angled corner pieces. Test setup. The test of specimen is weighted weighed before assembled and it is its effective across section is determined. The primary winding formed by connecting four similar magnetizing coil in series is connected to the AC supply through the auto transformers in series with the current coil of watt meter. Across one of these two secondaries, potential coil of the watt meter is connected and across other is connected an electrostatic watt voltmeter. The voltage applied to the primary winding is adjusted till the magnetizing current is adjusted to give required value of BM. The wattmeter and voltmeter readings are noted. RMS value of EMF induced in the secondary winding S2. E is equal to 4 kF B max AS F N2 volt. KF is the form factor. AS is the cross-sectional area of the specimen. B B1 max equal to E by 4 kF AS F N2. The secondary winding S2 encloses flux in the airspace between specimen and coil in addition to the flux in the specimen. Correction need to be applied for the value of B dash max. Observed value of flux is equal to true value of the flux in the specimen plus flux in the airspace between the specimen and coil. B dash max AS is equal to B max AS plus mu zero HM AC minus AS. B max is equal to B1 max minus mu zero HM AC by AS minus 1. AC is the cross sectional area of the coil. B1 dash max is the observed value of flux density. B max is the true value of the flux density in the specimen. We want to find the iron loss of the specimen. The wattmeter reading includes the iron loss of specimen and copper loss of secondary winding circuit. The copper loss of secondary circuit can be calculated and it is subtracted from the wattmeter reading. Let Pi is the total iron loss, P is the wattmeter reading, V is the voltage applied to wattmeter pressure coil, E is the voltage reading of voltmeter equal to voltage induced in the S1. R is the RP is the resistance of wattmeter pressure coil, RC is the resistance of coil S1 and I is the IP is the current in the pressure coil circuit, voltage induced in S1 equal E is equal to IP into RP plus RC, total copper loss in the secondary E square by RP plus RC. Total iron loss in the specimen plus copper loss in the secondary winding is equal to PE by V. Because the wattmeter reading is P, current coil current into PC, pressure coil voltage is equal to IC into V. The pressure coil voltage is reduced due to the resistance drop of the section co secondary coil. It should be actually E to give the correct power loss. Thus, actual loss is IC into E or peak by V into A. PE by V. Therefore, total iron loss of specimen PI is equal to PE by V minus E square by RP plus RC watts. Therefore, total iron loss of specimen PI is equal to PE by V minus E square by RP plus RC watts. PE by V minus E square by RP plus RC. PE by minus uh, E minus IP RC minus E square by RP plus RC. <coughs> At last, we get the, this formula. Specific iron loss can be calculated by dividing total iron loss by weight of specimen. Advantages are reliable and superior for testing. Measurement luminous intensity. It is the illuminating power of the source and is measured by units called candela. Transducers used for the measurement of luminous intensity. It changes a transducer changes the physical quantity into an electrical signal. It is an electronic device which has two main functions: sensing and transduction. It senses the physical quantity and then converts it into electrical signals. The photoelectric transducer converts the light energy into electrical energy. It is made of semiconductor material. Photoelectric transducers working can be categorized as photoemissive, photoconductive, or photovoltaic. 
In photoemissive devices, radiation falling on a cathode causes electrons to emitted from the cathode surface. Surface. In photoconductive device, the resistance of a material is changed when it's illuminated. Photoconductive cell. Light striking the surface of a material can provide sufficient energy to cause electrons within the material to break away from their atoms. Thus, free electrons and holes are created within the material and consequently its resistance is reduced. This is known as photoconductive effect. It uses semiconductor material like cadmium selenide as a photosensing ele element. When the beam of light falls on the semiconductor material, the conductivity increases and the material works like a closed switch. The current starts flowing into the material and deflects the pointer of meter. Photoconductive material typically uh, is, is deposited in a zigzag pattern, separating two metal coated areas acting as electrodes, all on insulating base such as ceramic. The assembly is enclosed in a metal case with a glass, glass window over the photoconductive material. Photovoltaic cell, which is the process that generates voltage or electric current in a photovoltaic cell when it is exposed to sunlight. Light is composed of photons, which are simply small bundles of electromagnetic radiation or energy. When light of a suitable wavelength is incident on this cell, energy from the photon is transferred to electron of semiconductor material, causing it to jump to a higher energy state known as conduction band. In their excited states in the conduction band, these electrons are free to move through the material and it is the motion of electron that creates an electric current in the cell. Semiconductor material like arsenide, indium, cadmium, silicon, selenium and gallium are used for making the PV cells. Most silicon, mostly silicon and selenium are used for making the cell. The output voltage and current obtained from the single unit of the cell is very less. The magnitude of the output voltage is 0.6 volt and that of current is 0.8 volt. Temperature sensors. It is a device that converts thermal quantity into electrical signal. Main features of temperature transducers. The input to them are always the thermal quantities. They generally convert the thermal quantity into electrical quantity. They are usually used for measurement of temperature and heat flow. Basic scheme of temperature transducers. The basic element of temperature transducers are sensing element, transduction element. Types of temperature transducers. The first is tem uh, there are four types. Uh, RTD, NTC, thermistor, thermocouple, semiconductor based temperature sensors. Thermistor, uh, these are explained in the fifth module. Please go through that. So I am binding up here. Thank you for watching.